Hello everyone. Today's story is called Just Like Beverly. It's a biography of Beverly Cleary. Now, a biography is an account of someone's life written by someone else. And in this case, as you can see, the writer is Vicky Conrad. And this story follows the life of a very well-known children's author called Beverly Cleary. And it follows her childhood years in Oregon, America, to her career as a very successful writer who wrote the popular children's books, Ramona, and also the series of books, Henry Huggins, as well as others. Now, these books were written many years ago, so I don't expect that many of you will know her books because you're too young, but you can always look out for them now. And interestingly, Beverly is still alive today. She's 104 years old. Now, I think this is a truly inspirational story and I hope you enjoy it. Just like Beverly. The end pages here, you can see pictures of the countryside and that's where Beverly um, spent her first few years in the countryside. On a farm near Yamhill, Oregon, lived a girl named Beverly Bunn. She had no siblings and there were no other children nearby. So her playmates were farm animals. She fed baby birds, climbed trees and followed horses around the fields. Beverly loved stories, but she had only two books. Her mother read them out loud over and over. Beverly was so starved for new stories, she made up her own. She made up stories about the fluffy yellow chick in a magazine ad. She recited Goldilocks and the Three Bears over and over and dreamed up adventures about the Campbell's Soup Kids. In Yamhill, other children needed books too. So Beverly's mother decided to start a children's library in town. When she asked the Yamhill community for donations, a pile of adult books arrived. Where are the books for kids like me? Beverly wondered. Beverly's mother wrote an article for the newspaper about Yamhill's need for books. To her surprise, crates of books arrived from the State Library of Oregon and Salem. 62 beautiful children's books in a cupboard in an empty room above the bank became Yamhill's first children's library. Finally, Beverly had new stories. She sat on her mother's lap and listened to book after book, fairy tales and Beatrix Potter stories about bunnies and squirrels were her favourites. When Beverly turned six, her family moved to Portland, Oregon. There she found playmates, neighbourhood children, just like her. They had games and toys, Parcheesi, Tinker Toys, Old Maid and Dolls Houses. Everyone owned roller skates, except Beverly. She sat on the front steps of her house, longing for her own pair. Her father came home from work one day with the perfect gift. At last, Beverly felt like part of the neighbourhood, skating up and down the hills with skinned knees. Beverly and her friends had fun inventing games. They made perfume by pounding rose petals and soaking them in water. They played brick factory by smashing old bricks into dust with rocks. They clanked around on stilts made from coffee cans until they fell over laughing. To teach her to be graceful, Beverly's mother enrolled her in ballet. She danced around the studio, trying to learn steps that sounded like gallop and saute. Soon it was time for Beverly to attend Fernwood Grammar School. Her father brought home two first grade readers. I'll teach you to read, her mother said. Beverly shook her head no. She wanted to learn at school. The first day at Fernwood was a blur of children. A whistle blew and everyone marched into the class. Beverly pumped her knees and followed. Before lessons, the class sang about the dawn's early light. What kind of light is a donzer? she wondered. Of course, what she was hearing was the dawn's early light. 
Everything was strange to Beverly. The songs, the Pledge of Allegiance, the rules, the desks all in rows. She felt small and nervous. Maths lessons were easy for her. She could already add and subtract with real numbers, not counters. Her teacher, Miss Falb, never noticed. When Beverly wrote with her left hand, Miss Falb noticed. You must always hold your pencil in your right hand, she scolded. Now writing was painful and hard. Beverly began to write, read small words like Mama, Kitty and C. Then Beverly got sick with smallpox. This was a serious sickness. A red sign on her lawn warned the neighbours and the milkman to keep away. Even her father had to leave until she was well again. You can see the red warning sign there in her garden. You see the smallpox on her face. When she returned to class after weeks and weeks, reading was harder. Miss Fall put everyone into reading groups. Bluebirds, redbirds and blackbirds. The bluebirds were the best readers, the blackbirds the worst. Beverly was assigned to the blackbirds. Beverly dreaded reading circle when each blackbird had to stand and read aloud. All eyes watched her struggle, her tongue tripping over the sounds. She hoped for easy words she already knew, like party and baby. As she stood for her turn, Beverly's st stomach twisted and her voice was as small as a mouse. Besides, the reading books were boring. The children in the stories never did anything interesting, and they weren't funny like her friends. Tom and Pam go to the seashore, she read. Beverly knew everyone in Oregon went to the beach. No one said seashore. Where were the books about kids like her? Once, when Miss Falb caught Beverly daydreaming, she whipped her hands with a switch. The stinging was unbearable. Another time, she banished Beverly to the coat room. She sat on the floor and cried. School was not the happy place she had imagined. At the end of the year, Beverly's grades were bad and she could barely read. All summer, she dreaded going back worried she would have to repeat first grave, grade with Miss Falb. But something wonderful happened the next year. Beverly went on to second grade and got a new teacher. Miss Marius was patient and encouraging. Beverly, come to my desk with your book. Side by side, Miss Marius pointed to the letters and hinted at their sounds. Soon, Beverly could read every word. Finally, she was happy and confident at school. She was proud in a way she had never been before. She could read, but the books were too boring. So Beverly decided she would read only for Miss Marius, the teacher she loved. One day, Beverly's mother found an old box of books in a church basement and brought two of them home for her. I will never read these, Beverly thought. But on a boring, rainy Sunday afternoon, she picked one up, just to look at the pictures. It was called The Dutch Twins. Beverly read a few pages. Then she read a few more pages, and a few more. Before she knew it, the whole afternoon was gone. At last, Beverly understood the magic of books. The children in The Dutch Twins were just like her. They were funny and had adventures. She started the next book right away. For the first time ever, her mother put off bedtime. From that day on, Beverly was a reader. She endured the gloomy Oregon winters, curled up in the public library. Beverly's love of reading led to writing. A newspaper offered a free book to any child who wrote a review. Her mother suggested she try it. The newspaper gave her the story of Dr. Doolittle. They published her book review in the paper along with her photograph. Suddenly, Beverly was the school celebrity. 
When Beverly was in fourth grade, the store across the street from school held an essay contest. The best animal essay would win a $2 prize. Beverly chose an excellent topic, the Oregon beaver, of course. Her father brought home green scratch paper from his job at the bank and Beverly used it to write her essay. Beverly was so nervous, so many of her classmates planned to enter, but she did her best and turned her essay in early. On the last day of the contest, she raced to the store. Beverly won. Mr. Abendroth handed her the prize money. She couldn't believe it. Two whole dollars. Uh, you were the only one who entered, he said with a chuckle. Beverly was still thrilled. In fact, she learned a powerful lesson. Try. Anyone can talk about writing, but only those who sit down and do it will succeed. In seventh grade, Beverly wrote stories in her reading class. Her teacher, Miss Smith, was impressed. She read one of Beverly's stories out loud and announced, When Beverly grows up, she should write children's books. Beverly dreamed of being a writer. She even found the spot on the library shelf where her books would go someday. After finishing high school, she went to college in California. At a party, a kind man named Clarence Cleary asked her to dance. They soon became friends, and as college ended, Clarence promised to marry her. But Beverly needed to follow her dreams of becoming a librarian. So, while Clarence stayed in California, she moved to Seattle to study library science at the University of Washington. Then she got a job as a children's librarian in Yamaka, Washington. Beverly missed Clarence. But she loved her job. Once a week, a group of rowdy boys came in looking for books. She struggled to find something just right for them. One exasperated boy asked her, Where are the books about kids like us? Beverly didn't have an answer. She thought about her own childhood reading boring books. She remembered how she longed for funny stories about children in her neighbourhood. Children just like her. So, with her first paycheck as a librarian, she bought a typewriter to write the stories she wished she had had as a girl. But her librarian duties and writing letters to Clarence ate up all of her time. After a year, Clarence came to Yakima and surprised her with a ring. Beverly was overjoyed. They got married and moved to California, where, staying true to her love of books, she worked as an army librarian and a bookstore clerk. As Beverly's life changed, she still longed to write her own stories. One day, in the closet of their new home, she and Clarence found a ream of paper. I guess I'll have to write a book, joked Beverly. Why don't you? asked Clarence quite seriously. Beverly laughed. We never have any sharp pencils. The next day, Clarence came home with a present. Beverly remembered her lesson from the essay contest. She had to try. She was determined to write a story of her own. As she stared at the paper in the typewriter, she wasn't sure how to begin. Was it all a foolish dream? She thought about the boys at the library. She thought about her childhood, roller skating on Hancock Street. She would write the story she longed for as a child. Beverly remembered hearing a funny story about a boy and his dog riding the streetcar. She wrote her first sentence. Henry Huggins was in the third grade. What will I call the dog, she wondered. Glancing towards the kitchen, it came to her. Spare ribs. Beverly completed her first short story, naming it Spare Ribs and Henry. She sent it off to the publishers and waited. She checked the mail every day. Finally, a postcard came that read, Your manuscript has been received. She kept waiting. Every afternoon for six long weeks, she trimmed the rose bushes in her yard, waiting for the mailman. 
Beverly explained she was waiting for good news. At last, the mailman came running. It's here, he called. Beverly celebrated with Clarence. Spare ribs became Ribsby. And two years later, Henry Huggins became her first published book. It was a huge success. She wrote many more books inspired by her childhood. Each story was filled with characters who lived and played on Clickatat Street. Beverly's character, Ramona Quimby, loved playing Brick Factory, wearing coffee can stilts and roller skating. Do you all remember that's what Beverly did when she was a little girl too? She wondered about the dawn's early light, just like Beverly. That was the song that confused her at school. Henry Huggins was just like the boys who came into the library. Beverly Cleary, the struggling blackbird reader, wrote more than 40 books for children. She became one of the most celebrated authors in the world by writing for children just like her. And we can see here some of the titles of her books, if you want to ever look out for them. Beezes and Ramona, Ribsy, Ramona and her father, Ramona and the pest, the mouse and the motorcycle, Henry Huggins, Ellen Tebbets. I hope you enjoyed this story as much as I did. Bye.